Hey. Hey. Hi friends and welcome to Knitting at the Boxerville Homestead. My name is Carol and I am coming to you from the Pacific Northwest where today it's kind of weird weather. I'm hoping the lighting's going to be okay. It is Oh my gosh, it's five o'clock. Um, but I was in Seattle most of the day. Traffic was traffic was traffic like it always is, and I'm just now getting to this. Uh, my husband is down on the Columbia River fishing, hopefully catching kings, uh, and we'll be gone overnight. So normally I'd be like getting dinner ready right now, but anyway, I'm gonna film this anyway. So today we are in double digits. This is episode number ten, and. At the time of filling, filling, filming, we have 96 subscribers and that's probably nothing to a lot of um, other podcasts, but you guys, I'm super excited about that. And um, I can't wait to hit that 100. Can you just tell? I'm elated. My dimples are all out and open. Today on the show, we are going to have, we're going to have an FO, a kind of an FO, and it's an FO, but it's not explaining, or it's not the acronym for finished object, I could give it another name. It's the saga of that Felix sweater. It's going to kill me yet. Wait till you see what I've done. Uh, on the needles, planning ahead, uh, a couple of additions to the vault, and repeat offenders. Um, one of the funniest things on Instagram, which you can find me on as knitting, no, the Boxerville Homestead. It's just the Boxerville Homestead. And email is boxervillehomestead at gmail.com. And I'll put these all up on the screen Screen when I edit it. Um, a funny thing is on Gotham Knits, Gotham Knits, who's fun to follow anyway, and she's fabulous. She's amazing. She posted something, I don't remember what it was, a week or maybe two ago. And I just made a comment on it about, you know, with a finger pointing up saying, this is why my husband calls our spare bedroom the vault. It's had like 400 likes and laughs on it. It's I think it's hilarious because maybe nobody else calls it the vault. Actually, at least one does because someone made a comment. Now, the sun is getting brighter, believe it or not, right now, and I hope this isn't washing out. Um, I do have a uh, circle light and I'm in the dining room today is where I'm coming to you from. At the time I turned this on, the lighting was the best. Who knows now? Uh, what I'm wearing is a very, very old knit around my neck. I was chilly when I got home. The wind has been blowing here and um, I just had a chill. I was thinking I was going to go for a run, so I put my running gear on and it started raining and I thought, uh-uh, I'm just going to film a podcast and I'll run tomorrow. Whatever, right? So anyway, let's get into it. First finished, well, actually there's one finished object. The one is going to have to go back into the drawing board. My socks are done and last week I didn't do a normal episode. I did the 10 tops, tanks, shirts, something that I'm looking to knit for summer. So I didn't pull into the normal podcast, even though you guys know that are returning. And again, if you're returning, thank you for coming back and welcome to new people. Yes, I am always this scattered. It's my personality. It's why I think I make a good ER nurse because I can go from one thing to the next and still maintain decorum, I guess you would say. Anyway, Knit by Gray Owl uh, Knits. This is Life is Better When Camping, which it is. My husband and I are huge campers. Well, we're glampers. We have a fifth wheel, a rather large fifth wheel with several slides and a fireplace and a tea. You guys, I'm just not, he took me camp. We've been together 37 years. The boy took me camping like before we were married. So it was kind of, you know, back then not looked really good upon. Um, anyway, we went camping in a tent and I know a lot of people like it, but I am not made for a tent. It's just not, it's just not me. And I told him, if you ever want to take me camping again, you will get me a trailer. And so we've had a trailer or a fifth wheel ever since, which we prefer a fifth wheel. And I didn't say about this. I started, this is an old, and I'll, 
I could just take it off and show you guys. So who remembers the hitchhiker shawl? I met several of them because I really liked them. And it was by Martina Bohm. Is that right? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. Might've been. Um, I had some leftover. I'd made several of these and then I had some leftover. I don't even know what it is, but I just knit on this little baby until I didn't have any left. So it still is a fun knit. I still would do it again. Um, I have some larger ones, but this one just looked, oh, look at there. I didn't even weave an end in. End in. Huh, go figure. Is that not a Carol thing or not? I don't even know if I said my name today. My name's Carol. Today is March the 23rd. Oh dear, it's actually my mother-in-law's birthday. Hopefully John sent her something. <laughs> um, we're really close, right? Uh, let's see, now I've lost all track to 2023. And pretty sure I said where I was coming from. Yeah, where you can find me. Yeah, I think we did, we did good. We did very good. Anyway, this is just a tiny bit of the Hitchhiker What uh, I had enough yarn for because I wanted to use it and I just, I don't even know what it is. I have no clue. Anyway, back to the socks. So this is a wonderful written pattern. I've said before many times, and I hate to redown the yarn, but I hated it. It's splitty. It has such a high twist, but I do love the color. I mean, the colors are just like, oh, and I have a, I found a stitch loose. So they're kind of really not done, but eh, you know me. No, I'll fix it because I want to wear these camping. I'm going to put them in the fifth wheel. We call our fifth wheel a lamb yacht. Anybody else name their trailers? We have named every one of ours. We actually sold Splash, the Splash on in actually, um, last summer, summer before last. We had Splash about seven years. It was a lot of fun, fifth wheel. It was our first fifth wheel when we decided we were fifth wheel people. Anyway, I have Partridge Hill. I'm not sure what heel goes with the pattern, but I like this one. It wears well. Um, just a simple wedge toe. Again, I'm not sure what toe is on the pattern. It's what I did. This is all Spud and Chloe. It's a sock weight. Like I said, a crazy high twist. The, I'm putting it in the donation pile to take it to the Goodwill. I will not knit with it again. It's, I don't like it. So what I did is on the, I did opposite toes from the tent on this one and the little trailer on this side. Uh, for the color work, I've mentioned before, just kind of a short for people that didn't see it. It says to go up a needle size. I did go up a needle size here, but I've done a lot of color work over the years. And I really think that because I have, and I understand floats, this was, this is really ruched to me. And I wish it was a little tighter. Um, they have been blocked and they just still to me little bit loose on the leg. I kind of like a, a tighter leg. Um, anyway, they're cute. I like them. They'll be fun to wear camping. And I'm mostly glad it's done because of the yarn, but I will knit this pattern again. It's a fabulous pattern. It really is. So done. You don't have to look at them again. Unless I take you camping with me, you might see them on me. I don't know. It's hard to say. I need a sip. My throat is dry. I am drinking today um, a Bigelow Botanicals Cold Infusion. Have you guys had these? So this is what this one is. It's blackberry, or is it blackberry? Yeah, blackberry raspberry hibiscus. And it's very tasty. So I don't know if you've tried them. They're good. You can get them in the grocery mart. I believe I bought these at Safeway. So it's nice. It's a nice flavor. It's uh, mild. It's lovely. I like it. Okay. <laughs> Here's the piece of the resistance. I'm not kidding you guys. If you followed along in the saga of the Felix sweater by Amy Christophers and my attempt at casting it on, I've I don't know, four or five times. I lost count in patience, but I finally figured it out. And I figured out what I was doing wrong. It's a right-handed world. I swear that's what it is. And that's what I'm blaming it on. So I have mentioned before, I knit sleeves and socks two at a time. I have to. <laughs> Otherwise, 
I get second sleeve and sock syndrome so bad that I could tell you, I could show you multiple onesie socks from years ago that I, I lost interest in. Some I don't even know what the pattern is to be able to pick up and do the other one. I really should frog them and I think I'm gonna have a frog, frog it or finish it video one time just because sadly I have a lot of them. So the Felix, I love this, well, not this one, but I love the sweater. I love the pattern. I think this eyelet is absolutely beautiful, right? It's lovely. So I got it done, kind of. Now, first of all, before I block or do anything or and try it on the final time after the soak, I leave, I leave everything on it. I don't fully bind it off. I just, from years of learning, usually it's not an issue and I end up just boom, binding, you know, finishing the last few stitches off and sewing in the ends. But I always soak and block it first. So got the body done, was finishing the sleeves, doing one sleeve part way down the other with the decreases, even lay on each side. So I'm knitting the sleeves and I get to finishing up on the right side. I did a twisted rib, which I love. I went from um, Now I've got to look at something, see if I did something on the other side differently. Why am I having... <laughs> okay, no. I did a twisted rib, which I like. I like it on hems. I like it... I just think it looks nice. And oftentimes I will even go from a 2 by 2 and I will decrease it down to a one by one so that I can do that Andrea Mowry's um, bind off, which I think is just lovely. But I left this 2 by 2 and it was just, I really enjoyed it. I left it. I didn't want to secure it all the way off in the event that I soaked it and the sleeve was going to be too short, too long. I figured it was going to be okay. And then I did the other side. And I was knitting on it and measuring it and kind of going relatively by the 15 inches that she recommends for sleeve length before going into the, the ribbing. And I would do it and I'd think, well, I thought I just, it, well, I swear it just, I'd only needed three more rows. So I'd do three more rows and I'd measure it again and I'm off. Well, I did that three or four or five times. And finally, I swear I held it up against the next one and I thought, oh, I'm finally there. So I started doing the rhythm, rib, the rhythm, the ribbon. I should have been doing the rhythm, the ribbing. So I did the ribbing, same amount of number of stitches on this side as the other side. Did, got it ready to do the bind off up to the point of actually um, binding it off. And I held it up and I thought, what is going on here? So I showed this a little bit on the 10 tops that I was looking at and <laughs> oh my goodness that three more rows and three more rows and three more rows who does that is this just me I think this <laughs> this pattern is trying to do me in and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it and put it in the closet and just chalk it up to a learning experience and quit the aggravation. But I thought, no, you know what? I'm gonna do something I've never done. I think, tell me what you guys think. Write in the comments if you think I should do this. So my two options, tink that sleeve back, right? To the proper length, re-knit the cuff. Or something I've never done on a sleeve, I've done it on a sock to put an afterthought heel in. Why could I not do like a little sweater surgery like I do for an afterthought heel, cut that sucker, 
and then graft it together proper length. I mean, what have I got to lose, right? So if you guys think that's a good idea, or if you think I'm crazier than you already think, you can let me know that too. It's fine. Um, but if you think that's a good idea and it's something that you'd like to see me do, leave me a message, send me a message, post a comment, and um, I'll video, I'll tape it and do it. I mean, what the heck? I don't care at this point. Um, I'm, I'm up for it. I truly am up for it. So let me know. So this is the lovely sweater by Amy Christopher's. It's the Felix sweater. And um, yeah, it's trying to get me. It truly is. So, to be continued. <clears throat> okay. You know, because really, you know, the nurse in me really wants to cut it. I mean, I really do. I can't help it. See, what else do we have on the needles? Okay. <laughs> so, my jelly roll blanket that I've been working on. And it's going to be an ongoing pro uh, project. I'm knitting out of an Attic 24 yarn kit that I purchased from World Wool Warehouse in the UK. Highly recommend them if you're in the US and you're nervous about it. They're amazing. Super fast, crazy shipping, like $11. And I ordered a lot. You know, it was just like, it's coming all that way. I might as well get a few extras. And I showed that a while back. So I am not there. I'm going to show you this. This is the progress keeper from last time, right? This actually was isn't as far as I was. But I have discovered that Sophie, who is in a lot of the videos in the whatever this is, a vlog podcast, she's decided she's a knitter herself. And you'll notice now I have end protect uh, needle protectors on each end. The girl unraveled. Yeah. I had to I had to literally pull the rest of it back. And it was mostly she had unraveled from the side, bless her heart. If you're from the south, you know what that means. Bless your bless your heart. So that's still going. I have very little progress, um, but it's fun to knit on. It's like mindless. I can do it in the evening after dinner. I don't have to think. I highly recommend it. Pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. So it's good. I like it. And it's my first scrappy pro project. I've never done a scrappy project. I don't know why, but now I'm kind of into it. I kind of dig it. Next, I'm knitting socks for my husband. And I've showed, I don't have a pattern for this. I've knit so many of them over the years that I just do it. It's a wool sock. This is super, super sheepy wool. And I have to look and see. So I started these, the cuff at the top on a US4. 52 stitches. This is Yoth yarn, yarn on the house. This is the daughter version. Um, I always knit two at a time on the socks, just like... I do sleeves. Again, I have to or I will lose interest. I'm not kidding you. Um, I said it's a daughter. This is the natural chocolate and the natural vanilla. So I start out on a US4 and I do the first usually like 20 rows and then I use a, a US5, which is, that's a 3.75 millimeter, right? Yeah. Um, and I go quite a ways on the two by two twisted rib until I get to just plain stockinette. On these, I will do probably the, the vanilla in the heel and the toe. But you know what I'm gonna do? Now these are all wool, there's no nylon or anything. These are super sheepy. You can feel the lamellin in it, I love it. Um, even with my poor um, sense of smell that's left over from COVID, thank you. Uh, I can still even kind of smell it. I love sheepy yarn. But I think what I'm going to do, John always wears, if he's going to wear anywhere, it's going to be, well, let's put it on here and I'll show you. So if he is going to wear anywhere, it's going to be right here where it goes into his shoe. He doesn't always wear them with boots. He'll often wear them with, um, I don't even know what kind of shoe, Romeo's, right? 
and it'll rub there. So what I'm thinking, when I get to that part, which will be the heel, um, or the start of the heel, I am gonna hold it with this natural vanilla and a cream colored mohair to give it more strength. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that gonna be too bulky? I don't know, I'm gonna try it. He's gonna be my guinea pig and he won't even know it. That's the best part. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll keep you posted. So hopefully, I just started these, well, last week sometime. So you haven't seen these at all yet. And because it is a, this is a DK weight, so they do go faster, um, but I like them. They're fun, and he loves them. He is so knit-worthy. He is so appreciative of anything that I've knit for him. But you want to know something? I've had that boy 30, I'll be 37 years in September. Only married 34 this year, but I've never knit him a sweater. It might be the time. I know that Taylor from Wool Needle Hands, which I love her. She's amazing. Um... She is knitting her husband a sweater, I think, for the first time, maybe two. Break the, it's a break the something cow. I should do that. Yeah, I need one more thing on the needles, right? What the hey? Okay, well, I think that is all of the whips or on the needles. Let's check our notes here. On John's socks, I do 54 cast on stitches, uh, two by two twisted rib, heel flap turn, gusset. Usually I have partridge. I like it because I think it wears nicer and I like the looks of it. And then on down to the, t the toe. Now, usually I do, on him, I just do a wedge toe. The boy has Fred Flintstone feet. So I have feet. I have mentioned this so many times, but it's true. So a wedge foot or toe for him works really good too. Okay, the vault. The vault has had a little action. It's accidental, kind of, but so I, I don't even know how or where I saw this, but there is a pattern called the Hue and Me Easton Striped Pullover. Have you guys seen it? Now it is a Lion Brand wool that um, I probably wouldn't have looked at had I not seen this come across. And I cannot remember how I, how I saw it come across. Somebody's podcast, maybe, I'm not really sure. Look how cute that is. Is that not darling? I think it's so cute. So it is made out of Lion Brand, Hue and Me, H-U-E and Me yarn um, in the colors Desert, which is the tan, Agave, which is the blue, and then the darker rusty color is called Arrowwood. It's a bulky yarn, a number five. Uh, it's a pattern by Two of Wands, who partnered with Lamb's Wool for this sweater. You... For my size, it takes three of the desert, two of the agave, and two of the arrowwood. So what did I do? I marched myself right down to Joanne's fabric, and they had only two of the desert. I was tempted to get it, but I thought, no, I want all the same lot uh, number. So I ended up ordering it, but I was able to get two of the arrowwood. Now this is a 80 acrylic and 20% wool. Now I am trying, is that upside down or is that me? I am trying to embrace this as well because you know what? I'm not a yarn snob by no means. The only thing I don't like about some of the acrylics is I don't like how it wears or I don't like that slick feeling, but I'm going to try this and see what it feels like. Again, Taylor Earl from Wool Needle Hands has kind of rubbed off on the fact that there's some nice yarns in these big box stores that are affordable for people that maybe can't afford a hand dyed or not even a hand dyed, but you know, 
any of the other names I can think of. I don't want to just single like one or two out that I may have. So I want to do it. I'm going to try it. The sweater's darling. And this is, oh, the agave is really pretty, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Let me see. That's pretty darn close right there. And then the desert is a lighter, not this light, but it's a lighter. I just think it's going to be so cute. So, and the cool thing about it, super size inclusive, like extra small, which is a 42.5. It's a boxy one. Remember this has like, what did I read? Is it like 10 to 12 inches of positive ease? It's a lot. I even consider going down a size cause I'm not that crazy about that much. Um, positive ease. Anyway, 42 and a half inches, 108 centimeters up to 68.5 inches and 174 centimeters, which I believe is a 6XL. No, I'm sorry, 4XL. So extra small up to 4XL. That's awesome. Beautiful size. Um, the It's described as, I believe, easy to intermittent, intermediate. Um, things that you need to know are the knit stitch, the purl stitch, the knit two together, slip, slip, knit, and then it's knit flat. And so you would also have to be able to seam it. And it sounds like you have the front and the back arms, the arms are set in and then you like seam up like this. I think I read it through really quickly, but I think that's how it put together. I suppose you could knit it in the round, but I think with this sweater, it would really lend to doing it seamed. It's a free pattern if you don't mind the ads. Um, and it is on the twoofwands.com site. So it is a free pattern. I will link it. You can buy a PDF version of it. And I think it was $4 something. Don't quote me on that. I will look it up and put it on there. I think it is. Anyway, I am excited for the desert to get here because even though it is March and we're getting into where it's going to be warmer, um, not terribly warm because often April for us is quite cool and damp and it looks like a fast knit. So hopefully next podcast, I will have that on the needles and something to show you guys because I'm excited about it. I think it's just it's going to be a fun knit. Um, yeah, I'm tickled about it. And with that, I also ordered, so another little addition to the vault. I have never knit with the, is it Chai Gu? Red Lace? With the cord knits, I mentioned when I went, when we went, on that field trip to Tolt Yarn and Wool that they had some there, but they didn't have a size that I would normally use. They were very low on stock, but I felt the cable and I was so impressed with it. And this is knit on a size, I believe nine for the ribbing and the collar and then a 10 and a half. And I know I have a 10 and a half somewhere, you know how it is, you find that black hole in your knitting, but I wasn't sure where and I thought, I'm going to try this. So I ordered the Chai Gu 10 and a half to knit this with. Uh, and I'll get back to you on what I think about it. Pretty much everyone I've spoke with really likes it. So yeah, I'm anxious to try that too. So that also is an addition to the vault. Uh, next on the needles as well is going to be, it's called I don't know how to say it, you guys. It's called, I'm going to spell it, and I'll put everything up on here. S-A-Y-R-E, and it is a tank. That is, so is it a free pattern? For me, it's a free pattern, and I think this is okay. I'm not sure. I hope so. It has to be, because it's, so it's a, from a book. Uh, the pattern is by Angela Hahn, and it's in the book Knitted Tanks and Tunics. And it is in, I first saw the book in, um, excuse me, I'm trying to think where I saw it. First saw the book 
Maybe I saw it on Ravelry when I was looking up all the tanks. Anyway, it, there, it is available on Ravelry. It's also available in the book by Angela Hahn, The Knitted Tanks and Tunics. And this is it. And how cute is that? That's the front. I think what I'm going to do, though, I'm going to do a fold over hem, a double hem, and then fold it over and seam it up. I just think that that might lay nicer. Um, and then this is the back. And the thing that caught me or caught my eye on it was the fact that it had listed for, you know, limited amount of uh, wool, or in this case, it's not wool. Uh, this is a cotton linen blend. And I have two of these. It says 60 cotton, 40 linen, uh, 100 grams, 284 yards, or 260 meters. This is by Juniper Moon Farm, which I've knitted with their wool before. Um, and the it's called Zooey, Z-O-O-E-Y. And it's super soft. Now I bought this at a yarn store in, I wanna say Duval. I'll put the name of it on the screen. It's when I went to Tolt. It was the field trip day. I probably told you. I'm sure I showed it in there. Anyway, um, this is color number 32 pearl. And I love it. I am into that. Somebody described it as, who was it? Middle-aged beige? I hope I'm not middle-aged. I'm going to be 59 here soon. I'm not middle-aged. I'm past the middle age, but you know what? We can still adhere. Anyway, the lady in the yarn store, she had knit a couple of tops with this and it didn't bother her hands. So I'm anxious to try it. I think it's going to look nice in this because I only have, I think, so what would that be? Eight, seven, 578 yards of it. And I believe for my size, I need 460 yards somewhere in there. So I think it's going to be super cute and I cannot wait. I may cast this baby on tonight. John's out of town. You know, it could get wild here with me casting on stuff. Who knows? I have a glass of wine too. So it reminds me a little sip. So super cute. I'm anxious to try it. It is an easy to intermediate. Um, the skill says including it, reading lace charts, lace knitting, decreasing increase, and a three needle bind off. Um, I'm guessing then the construction is probably bottom up and the bind off is going to be up on the, let's see, I haven't even read that far, but I like it. So whatever. Couple of things. I didn't bring anything from the cedar chest today. <clears throat> I figured I didn't want to go too long and really either bore you guys or drive you crazy. Um, so, but I do have a couple of tips and tricks. Now, one of the things, and I don't think I've talked about it, forgive me if I have, but I don't believe I have. There's this app that is the coolest thing. It's called Crochet Studio. I saw this on a podcast and I believe it was Blue Mountain Manx. And I'll put that link in the profile. The coolest thing about this is you can set up, like I'm not great as far as I've mentioned, I I want to do more crochet. I'm just not good at, I don't think I'm, I can do it. I just, I prefer to knit, but yet there's some things I want to crochet. So you can create granny squares. You can put colors in whatever colors you want. You can set up for a granny square blanket you can do a stripe generator blanket in order to, like you can put your colors in of your wool that you're using or whatever you're using to knit with. And this will set up for you a palette and you can either go in and choose your own or you can hit randomize and then make some magic and you just keep 
hitting it and they will set those colors up for you. I should have set up a granny square one. It was crazy impressive until you get what you want or you can do it yourself. It's a free app. Um, I have Apple iOS phone and I am pretty sure Android has the app as well. I'm pretty sure. Don't call. I'll see what I can find on that. But same way with the granny square one, you can choose your colors. You can pick how many you want in each square. If it's three or five or they set it up like this ahead of time, you pick that is a five. You hit again, randomize, make some magic. Is I think this is cool, you guys. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but I think it's awesome. Um, I should have taken the time to pick different colors, but I just used what they had up for their palette. But you just keep going into it, and then it tells you, it gives you a schematic when you get to where you want it. You hit up here at the top, generate the pattern, and it generates it into a PDF for you. And it will tell you all of the required patterns or the required amount of yarn for each or for the entire project, actually. So now it's generating. It does. It says it takes 20 to 40 seconds to get the PDF made up for you. This is free. I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm going to play with it a little bit. Someday I'll do a granny square. So it's downloading the PDF. And then you can send it to your printer. You can copy it. You can do a quick note with it. Um, each phone I'm, you know, is going to be different, obviously. Anyway, something kind of fun to play with. I thought maybe when I saw it, I thought I need to show you guys because it's kind of cool, right? Uh, especially for like scrappy projects, the striped blankets that are popular now. Is it the di is it called diamond? I can't remember what it's called, but. Um, a lot of, I'm seeing it on a lot of podcasts right now. So that's something that's kind of cool. Crochet.com. Did I talk about that in the, I don't believe I did. If I did again, another thing that's kind of cool. Crochet.com is very much nitpicks as well. Um, except for that your shipping threshold for free is always cheaper sometimes $35, right now it's 45. Nitpicks for a long time was $75, and I see now it's down to $65. That's the threshold you have to meet for free shipping. Um, so just thought, you know, the crochet.com, although a lot of us are knitters, we look at knitter sites like Nitpick, crochet.com has all of the same yarns basically, and um, a, lower a lower threshold for shipping, which you know, that's always a, it's always something to think about, right? Now, let me see if I've told you everything. I think I've told you everything I wanted to tell you this time. I, again, want to thank any of you that have returned to listen to me again. I am tickled that we're at episode 10, double digits. I'm also Beyond thrilled that, like I said at the beginning of this taping, we were at 96 subscribers. I thought when we hit 10, I was elated. Um, we're growing slow and that's okay, but I'm pretty tickled with our growth right now. Um, just taking a, I'm just, uh, I wanna wish you all well. I hope that your knitting and crochet and whatever you're making is just bringing you so much joy as mine does me. And I'll be back next week with another video. Um, please like and subscribe and comment, share, hit the bell. You guys know the drill. I've heard it a thousand and one times. Y'all have heard it too. But that truly is what gets us out there and gets, um, gets us known and, and is going to build the channel for us. I, um, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm just very happy about it. So again, um, I will see you next week. 
And as always, please consider adopting and not shopping. The life you save could be your very best friend. Have a wonderful week, friends, and I'll talk to you soon. Get out of that, you can't swim in that. Come here, come here.